Hello and welcome back to Up The Villa podcast. This is our opposition preview and I'm delighted to be joined by the legend Luke Lynx off his Brighton fan channel. Um, there's no point asking him how he is because he's absolutely buzzing. Um, but yeah, anyway, how are you? Oh, I'm doing very well and I really appreciate you uh, inviting me to come on the best Aston Villa podcast <laughs> and channel there is. I really appreciate it, Luke, and it's good to see you back here again and uh, good to have a little chat with you about what's going to happen Sunday. <laughs> I haven't paid him to say that either, but uh, we do kind of know each other because we were both nominated at the Football Content Awards, so we've sort of known about each other and we had a great little combo at the awards. So, um, you know, anyone that wants... Brighton vlogs, Brighton content, go and check Luke's Thank channel you. out because it's uh, absolutely amazing. So, Luke, how has the season been as a Brighton fan? Incredible um, and very surprising, to be fair. Uh, I think we, as Brighton fans, every season are shocked to see how well we're performing and improving every season. And as soon as we lost Graham Potter, we thought it was all going to be going downhill again. We thought, is this going to be the time that that you know hits us down into relegation to to put us back in the championship. All turned around. Deserby came in, improved things, improved our attacking side, mentality, everything has just gone the way that no one thought it would go. Yeah, and yeah. you know, it, it, I've done a predicted lineup for this episode. I absolutely love Brighton. Love the way they play love the players that you've got they're a fantastic football team to watch especially as like a neutral so someone that's not a fan of Brighton when when you're on TV I will 100% tune in and watch that game yeah. because you you know there's great players great technical players yeah. you're going to watch a team that's been coached really really well um, and I just think it, it's fantastic and you know <sighs> dare I say, a team like Brighton, never been in Europe before. So, you know, it, it's absolutely fantastic. And for football fans that are predominantly outside of that mm. top six bracket, so we get sort of our noses get turned, you know, whatever. Um, we're not the fancy names of Spurs, Chelsea, Liverpool, City, United. It's great seeing Brighton, Villa, uh, Newcastle back up there as well, so I think yeah. I think for teams like us who are you know not the sort of mainstay top six, it, it's great mm. to, it's great to see. So you started the season a little bit like what we did with a manager, got rid of that manager uh, for whatever reason, and then had a new manager, and then mm. there's been an upward trajectory. So we've both been on this upward trajectory. But what's the difference then between Potter and Deserby? Well, uh, personally, I think the difference is uh, attacking football um, and, of course, mentality. Now, of course, Roberto De Zerbi, he is very interesting to watch, to say the least. Every single match he is on his feet, he's jumping about, he's so energetic, he is so passionate. Whereas Potter, he's more controlled down and he, he talks to a lot of to his staff a lot with De, De Zerbi, I've seen the differences he's made a lot of decisions by himself and um he's not really used a lot of his assistant uh managers like Andrea and all that so yeah it's been uh it's been an interesting change it's been a big change because they're just so different in in the way they play and the way they want the the team to play it's uh it's been a big shock um but yeah, with you guys as well, changing your manager as well. I, the only difference is between you guys changing your manager and, and us changing our manager is we didn't necessarily want ours changed. And with you yeah. guys, you were going downhill <laughs> with Stevie we, G. We, I, we I personally did. thought, yes, I, I mean, I personally thought with you guys, I was like, you, you've got to get Steven Gerrard out. He's not working. It's not going as you guys wanted it. And at the start of the season, I did say, and I said um, to another YouTuber, as you know him, uh, Josh, a view from yeah. the stands. I said to him um, that you guys would get European football at the end of the season just because of how how good you guys were set it up before the season was started. I just, yeah, I thought good things were going to come your way, but it was it was good to see you guys change as it was us in the end, and we're both fighting for. Well, we're not anymore. We're already in yeah. Europe, but you guys are fighting for conference now. So yeah. it's kind of like us against City, where we yeah. we needed that that point to to make sure that we get into yeah. Europe and now we're not playing for anything and 
you guys could could get conference. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna touch on this about h- how you were feeling about those games because big games. Do you know what I mean? Like you yeah. you had to go into that city game, and to be fair, you I felt like you were gonna get it anyway because we were never gonna catch you on goal difference. But no. you know, to get the point against Man City, so how were you feeling about sort of like a, a defining moment? Like you have to mm. do. Like, were you, were you really nervous or pretty chill? Um, well, the thing was, it, it was a bit weird because you know, Deserby and, and all the players and everyone was saying, Oh, we definitely need that one more point for Europa. And I was like, Well, if you look at it, actually, you guys would have had to beat us like 16 yeah. goals or something to, to catch up with us. So I was a bit like unsure on where the stat they were getting from was uh was that we needed that one more point, but I was just happy to, to get that one more point, and I was sort of nervous going into it because I did want the last game to be chilled. I did want some other players to have the opportunity to play against you guys because I do think that Roberto Zerbi will uh, rest some of the other players and let some of the youngsters play. Uh, also might help you guys out for for trying to get a win out of it for conference. But um, I wanted the last game to be a chill one going to Villa Park. I didn't want it to be any hassle trying to get a point out of it. Um, so it was nice, really nice so going at City and get a point out of it was ridiculous. And the way we did it was even better as well. And of course, to to, to do it at home, to get that point, to guarantee Europa League and hear the Euro- Euro- European uh, music as well in the stadium that they showed us was uh, was incredible. It was good celebration. So it was nice. Mm. Yeah. So you touch on a couple of players that you think might be rested then. So I, I, I have been watching you quite a lot and I know he's been rotating the side quite heavily so you'll take out someone like Caicedo or McAllister or whatever so even Lewis Dunk the, yeah so Dun- Duncan Webster missed out against Man City didn't they yeah is that right and yeah. um McAllister missed out mm. and Ferguson was on the bench wasn't he yeah. so so what do you feel like is going to happen Villa wise team wise going into the weekend it's so hard to predict these days, especially at the end of this season. The, the amount of times, as you said, we've changed the lineup. It's so hard to predict what's going to happen. Is Caicedo going to be in right back? Is Gross going to be in right back? What's going to happen? Is Veltman going to be back? But apparently, with Dunk, he had a, a little injury that he's been a little niggly injury that has uh, that has been. Uh, bothering him in the last couple of games. So I think that's why Deserbi was like, right, we're going to have to give Lewis Dunk some time to actually recover. Uh, so we might see him back for the Villa game. We might not. We'll see. But yeah, it's really hard to say. Um, I th- I think that McAllister will be out and we'll have another break or he might come on for the last 30 minutes or something. Um, but we'll have to see because I didn't think City would put their full team out against us. Uh, but they, they ended up doing so with Haaland and De Bruyne. So yeah, it, we will have to see. It's very hard to predict, but I hope that some of the players get a break, actually, to be fair. Yeah, me too. Uh, um, so one player that I hope gets a break uh, is my favourite Brighton player. And mm. it's not Matoma. It is NC. So, right? Julio, he, Julio. He is amazing, right? Mm. Is, he, is he 18 or 19? He is 18. Same age as me. Um, got a signature up here. And just to show everyone, Villa fans as well. <laughs> This is the match worn shirt of the goal against Man City. This I saw, was his you, get, I saw you get that. He gave it away with his car, didn't he? Absolutely incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, he rang me up, funny enough, uh, and said he wanted to give it to me after the game. So I was, I was chuffed about it. Yeah, absolutely chuffed. I mean, how good is he then? How good is he? Incredible. Um, we we bought him for a fair amount actually. Uh, nine nine million five hundred uh k. And um, do you know what I was thinking? It's quite a lot of money actually. For it was a record signing for Libertad. He came from in uh, Paraguay. And I was thinking, you know, he's an eighteen year old. No one's ever heard of him. It's it's one of those Brighton players that he's either going to do really well or really bad because um, that's what we seem to be doing at the moment. They're either really good these little players that we don't know of, or they're shocking we've had a we've had a good past of very up and down so yeah I was interested to see how he's going to play I've seen him play in a couple of uh, cup games against Stoke and everything and the confidence just didn't seem to be there and I thought you know he's just too young but from what from that Stoke game that we played away he is 
massively, massively changed. And I think it comes down to mentality. I think Roberto De Zerbi has had belief in him and then he's had belief to to score goals and to, to have opportunities, you know, in the starting eleven. And I think it's really helped him. Ever since that Chelsea away match that he scored that well, it's he's gone on the up. Absolutely yeah. gone on the up. Yeah, he's class. Love him. Think mm-hmm. he's brilliant. So you are a Brighton vlogger. So you go to home and away. Uh, so how are you feeling about Europa League aways then? <sighs> yeah, it's going to be money. It's going to be money. We're going <laughs> to have to uh, definitely save up the uh, the cash for it. Um, do you? W- will you be going on any European away matches? If if, hey, if, if, if we get there, on there. Yeah, we, yeah, 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 definitely. Um, um, another I mean, question, we, actually. Uh, another yeah. question, just for the uh, game up against uh, Villa. Are you are you going to be there? You're going to be attending. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Would you, you be down to come on my channel? Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, definitely. We'll so get, we we'll we do fan cams as well. So we okay. do fan cams after the game. So um, come Class. over and yeah. we'll do some stuff. So we'll do it. Um, yeah, should should be good. So thoughts on the game? Then a feeling. Mm. Are you, are you on the beach? Does Zerbi might let you be on the beach, really? Nah, I don't think so. <laughs> Roberto, he, he'll want to win any game, whether it's a yeah. friendly or anything. He's so passionate. But with me, I'm going into it being as chilled as anything, to be honest. I have quite a few friends that are Villa fans now. And to be fair to you guys, um, I would be still quite happy for you guys if you did end up winning, getting conference, because I know you've been fighting for it. And you've had a rocky start to the season and you've really picked yourselves up. So I think you deserve conference league to be honest with you guys but yeah i'm going into it being very chilled very relaxed enjoying the day to be honest with you hopefully the weather's going to be nice and uh going to enjoy another day in villa park and villa park was my first ever away day for brighton so yeah it's going to be uh it's going to be fun i uh, I remember that vlog because i remember your face (laughs) yeah no we've not had um good good previous games with you guys we you know you've definitely gotten points out of us yeah, I think your your only win against us is uh, I think it was when it was in COVID. Um, yeah, I think it was beyond closed doors. So, it was, uh, well, so it? to finish this episode off, then we've got a World Cup winner. You've mm-hmm. got a World Cup winner. Looks like he's going, doesn't it, McAllister? It does. Yeah, possibly Liverpool. I've heard it's quite a strong link there. How does that How does that make you feel? Because you have that general like stigma don't you around Brighton yeah. like from the outside of you got your, all your best players mm. you sell them and I imagine now with someone like De Zerbi at the club he won't really want that to be a running theme will he no and I think no we definitely saw not that in, I think we saw that in Jan with Casado as well that mm. he didn't go so does it annoy you as a fan or are you, are you just sort of like it, it's gonna happen or it's a bit of an interesting one because I don't want to fall into being the another Southampton. You know, I really mm. don't want to want this team to to go into just literally being a, a business team for for Tony Bloom. I'm hoping that he's not going to be that guy just to make money on every single player. Hopefully, um, I mean to be honest with you, the the two big players that that could be going is obviously McAllister and of course Moises Caicedo. Now, I just hope one of them out of the two stays. Mm. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. I don't want loads of players to just go because I think it will rock, you know, our chemistry on how good we've been as as a team, especially this season. And of course, squad depth, you know, our squad depth has never been big. And um, I do want to try and build on that. And when players are injured, I don't want to have to worry about what we've worried about this season, having to change things. We've been very lucky to play how we've played really with Roberto De Zerbi because we, we've had to change the team a lot this season. And yeah, we've um, we've made it hard for ourselves, obviously, with the injuries. But yeah, we've we've pushed pushed through it for sure. Yeah, but yeah, I don't want to turn into a Southampton. I really don't. Yeah, and I, I think I think the, the the reason why I think you'll be different in the end mm. is because you've actually achieved something. You've actually like got Europe. Now that's a big yeah. thing because it's okay being like a nearly team. So like a nearly team where oh we nearly do this and we bring players in and you kind of have to sell the club to that. Pacific player whereas when you actually get into like Europe mm. it's so much easier to entice players it's easier to keep the players because absolutely they all want to play in Europe mm. and you're currently playing in Europe and you look at someone like Liverpool you're literally playing in the same competition as Liverpool That's so it. yeah do you know no, what I mean so it's true it's I true for and me um... now, like looking at it now 
this mm. is your opportunity to like really stamp yourself and yeah. not be that selling team. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I agree with that. And I think Roberto Serbi feels the same. I, I think, you know, he, he said, you know, we're in the Europa League now. So um, he's hoping actually that, um, you know, the boys like Alexis McAllister, Moises will put it into consideration that mm. we're in a high competition now. We didn't think that we we could even get Europe, you know, and maybe if we did, we'll get conference. So we're in Europa League. That's one off being the top on, on Champions uh, League. So, you know, I think the players have to put it into to consideration. We're, we're growing. And do you want to leave the club? We could turn into be a pretty beastly club, especially if we, you know, if if we put investments back into it by buying players and everything. So, yeah, I I, I really do hope that we do keep some some of these players, especially like Levi Cole will. I'm hoping that he would stay and not go back to Chelsea. Um, but yeah. Well, I was reading a bit of an interview that he did and he seems pretty, he seems to forget who he plays for, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's mad, actually. It's like Levi Cole will, you know, he, thinking that he's on loan is crazy, to be fair. He's fitted in so well and he's, he's played really well for us, to be fair. Yeah. I think the nice thing about Brighton is we are such a welcoming um, loving new fresh club. There's a lot of freshness about us where we play different football. It's it's all yeah. new. It's all fresh. It all feels really really good. And uh, I think the way they run and and keep the players uh, content as well at the club with people like Julio and Ciso so young coming over. Um, he's been settled so well this this season. It's been crazy. It's like he's been here for a couple of years in the academy. It's crazy. Yeah, it's uh, absolutely mental. Uh, it is. So. Thanks for coming on, mate. And uh, Thank hopefully you you'll see uh, more Luke on our channel on Sunday then. So, yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Thanks for coming on, mate. Cheers. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, up the villa as well, guys. I, I do hope you get Conference League in the end of the day. It'll be nice to see you guys up with us. And of course, Newcastle getting Champions League. Brilliant stuff as well. Cheers, mate.